a question I'm asked. What is one thing I could do if I think I might be at the moment of death? Great question. There's a lot of answers to that. The best answer is merge your mind with the one mind. Know that your mind is the mind of God. Surrender into pure awareness, pure love. When I was younger and I was really into the spiritual path kind of thing, living here in the Bay Area, a lot of yogis, saints, swamis would come through town, lamas, and I had a test question I'd ask people to see if they were on the same wavelength that I was or who they, they were. And the test question was, if you have a friend who's dying and they haven't meditated, what's the best thing you can do to help them? And the, the people that seemed to have the best answer said pretty much this. They said, merge your mind with the one mind and then merge your mind with the mind of your friend. Don't focus on you've got to fix them or deal with the cancer or deal with the emotion, but go directly to the place where you're as open and surrendered and united with the one and then unite with them. So if you can do that, that's certainly the best thing to do when you're, when you're dying. In Tibetan Buddhism, that's the deepest healing practice, non-dual non-practice, Dzogchen, Mahamudra, has different names. But it might be that when you're dying or I'm dying, it's hard to do that. It might be a very chaotic moment. There might be an accident. There might be trauma. There might be other people who are involved who are very emotional. So it's very useful during our lifetimes to cultivate practices to bring us back to being fully here, no matter how chaotic or difficult the surroundings are. When you're sitting in front of your altar or when you're sitting in front of a teacher who's saying wise things, it's a lot easier to be present, to go into the heart, to trust that connectedness. But it's so important to begin to integrate that into relationships, into work, into just the very fabric of your life. So that working with the body, working with the heart, working with the mind, all three of these channels in various circumstances. For me, I find that almost always the practice that really is robust and is available no matter how I'm feeling is mantra. To, to me, mantra feels like a tool. And sometimes I'm in a very refined state and the tool, the mantra tool is like a watchmaker's tool. It's a fine tool. Sometimes uh, I'm out in the world and it's not so refined. I need carpenter's tools. Sometimes life is just crazy and I need heavy construction tools, like pile drivers and steam shovels and and big, big, strong tools. You can always you, you can always say God's name. The great Saint Namdev said, the whole universe is densely permeated with the name. Even when you can't feel that, just the name itself is the God that the name is talking about. The, the mantra at one level is a vehicle to get you somewhere, but in truth, the mantra is the deity. Ram, I love you.